Hey, what's up, guys? It's T-Bone here, and welcome back to another episode of playing Legendary Game of Heroes. So it's the preview day for the event, the first Dragoon, and there's a couple of changes in here that I definitely want to talk about in today's episode. The first one is going to be the new event type hero called the Dragoon, and the second thing is the Dragoon challenge that they're introducing for our solo and guild boss fights. But before we do that, I wanted to showcase the mechanics of the event deck, which the network team has put out. It's a two-minute video, so let's go ahead and watch it now. Greetings, fair citizens of Corellis. This week's new event deck features a team of powerful Earth Affinity technological commanders who lay waste to the opposition with devastating nuke skills. Sycamore supports the rest of the team through generating technological intensity, as well as spawning a steady supply of Earth Gems with his battle skill. Additionally, Sycamore passively heals the team each turn. Overall, this team requires a steady flow of Earth Gems to maximize its potential, making Sycamore an important hero to slot in. The Unbowable Warrior brings his team to new heights by resetting the cooldowns of both Arbremiton and Eleanor and Babylonica's nukes by way of his battle skill, Treetop Tornado. Each hero whose battle skill cooldown is reset in this way further amplifies the damage of all technological heroes dramatically. Passively, the Unbowable Warrior revives himself and team upon receiving fatal damage, restoring all technological heroes' skills to full charge for a fierce last span. Our Bremiton and Eleanor's battle skill, Mountainous Mech, dishes out an overwhelming amount of burst damage by way of a single target nuke ability, which scales in power through technological intensity. Each time a nuke skill is used by either this hero or Babylonica, a high value power gem is created passively. Babylonica the Focused acts as a more potent version of our Bremiton and Eleanor, mimicking their battle and passive skills to great effect. Like our Bremiton and Eleanor, Babylonica's nuke cooldown is also reset by the Unbowable Warrior and spawns a high value power gem every time their battle skill is activated. Sycamore supplies the skill charge ups and healing, Babylonica and our Bremiton bring the pain with earth shattering nuke abilities, and the Unbowable Warrior resets their cooldowns to prepare them for a second volley of obliterating force. Combined together, these heroes form a well-synergized team that steamrolls raid bosses and waves of enemies alike. Don't let slip the opportunity to add this powerful deck of heroes to your arsenal. Since the preview video did a pretty good job of explaining the battle skills of each of the cards already, I'm not going to go into too much details there, but instead I want to talk about the ultra rare card here. This is always the card that people ask, is this the card that is absolutely necessary for the deck? Without it, will my team still be able to function? And so we can take a look at the battle skill here. Personally, I think that this card is going to make the deck really strong. And without it, the deck won't be quite as strong, but it's not going to be broken. Like some of the other decks that is completely dependent on the ultra rare, I think this will, this will boost it really well, but not make the deck completely broken without. So what it does is reset the battle battle skills and also fill it up so it effectively will double the power and the damage of your deck and it will also increase the attack so it's going to more than double the attack because it will have 125 percent increase at five stars and up to 250 at six stars and this can go up to four heroes at a time so for, for a single ultra rare you can boost your damage up to um, up to a thousand percent the passive here also is interesting because Instead of dying, you can survive and you can reset cooldown and fill the uh, skill meter. So this has never happened before. So the question always remains, is this card going to bypass flatline? Is this another way to bypass flatline? If so, then this card becomes that much more important for guild versus guild fights. So that's the sort of my take on it. And what I want to do is I actually want to use data here. So let's do a comparative analysis between the damage that you can deal with and without the ultra rare card on the team and we're going to use the damage calculator to do that we'll build a hypothetical team with four event cards and one sycamore the support card compared to having the ultra rare card so let's take a look now with four our Bramanton and eleanor cards on the team each time you activate a battle skill one card will create four power gem twos for a total of 16 power gems 
With Sycamore on the team as well, you're going to add five more gems there for a total of 20, 21 gems. And that is going to net you a total damage of 1.1 billion per event card. Now, if we switch out Sycamore for the Unbowing Warrior, the Ultra Rare card, suddenly with the reset in place, we are now doubling the number of gems. So we have 32 gems and 32 power gems for a total damage of 6.5 billion. But that's not all. Each time you reset a card, the Ultra Rare card will also increase the total damage by 250% with four event cards that it will reset. That's up to a thousand percent attack boost. And the final damage output is going to be 10.6 billion. So it looks like from the perspective of the gem match damage, and that is you match the power gems and then deal damage from that, Having an Ultra Rare card will definitely increase the damage by a lot, but I don't know how much it will impact the nuke damage per se. So the thing is, if you use this, if you treat this as a nuke damage deck, then you could actually get by pretty well without the Ultra Rare card. And I think you can pair it with a gem spawner card uh, for support and you can still do pretty well. So I'll be spending some time to discuss and also to explore different options in the future episode after the event starts. But while we're here, let's go ahead and open a couple of runes here. I have two of the support cards. One of them is actually gonna be Patchy Sept, which is a really good card to have. If you didn't have it before, this is a good card to have because it's a gem spawner as well as a healer. So let's go ahead and collect the token a rune here and let's go ahead and take a look at the one for jade tail as well and see what we get so two cart two runes that are not duplicated that's always good i'm hoping to get Ballora, which is one of the event cards from a previous event she's a, a gem destroyer so that's a good card to have as well and now that we've taken a look at the the cards and we've taken a look at the runes let's go and take a look at the news feed for the upcoming changes to the dragoons so here's the news feed that talks about the Dragoons and some of the highlights here are once you ha evolved your Dragoon to six stars, you can now specialize your Dragoon to one of four different forms. And it says specializing causes your Dragoon to take on a new species, battle skill, intensity, defender skill, and counter skill, which is really cool. We've never had that ability before, so I'm interested to see what that's like. But the thing is, look. if you look at the last paragraph, it says, To celebrate this special release, win Tekashigani in this week's Global Solo Leaderboard. So I don't know whether that means you can only win it if you get into Global, or if that means you're going to get something special. So that still remains to be seen. Now you may have noticed I didn't open any packs today, and that's actually generally what I would recommend to anybody who's just starting out. Don't open any main packs just yet. Uh, wait until the event starts and then open the support card if you want to see if you can get lucky with the ultra rare card. This is one of those decks where the ultra rare card will not be absolutely necessary, but it's going to make the deck very powerful. For me, I opened the main pack mainly so that I could get the runes, but I'm deciding to wait until tomorrow when the event starts and take a look to see how the event goes before I start opening any packs. So we'll reserve some pack opening in the upcoming episode. So that's it for today's episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for your time. And as always, let me know what your feedback is and comments, and I'll see you next time. Take care.